you have your Bibles, the book of Luke chapter number 2. Book of Luke chapter number 2. And I believe that God has got a word in store for us this evening. Looking forward to what God is going to do. But uh, how many of us are, you've just had a rough or a long week already. If you've had a long week, why don't you just raise your hand. Anybody have had a long week? Okay, a couple hands. I see two hands from somebody. Good news is that Jesus is in the house. Wherever he is, there's peace. Wherever he is, there's fullness of joy. So I could commiserate with you on their long week, but you know what? I'm here where Jesus is. And where he is, anything is possible. The book of Luke, chapter number 2, verse number 25. And it states, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when his parent, when the parents of the child, Jesus, to do him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God. This is Simeon, and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people to Israel. What a profound story. What an incredible moment this must have been. But for the next few moments, I just want to preach by the Spirit into promise. By the Spirit into promise. This story, every time I read it, it grips me. It just, it pulls me in every single time. And when I think that I can read it without it doing so, it it just turns out it can. I, I just love this story. And we see and that this man, the Bible states, Simeon was a just man, but he was devout. And what I find so interesting is we, there, oftentimes we hear a lot of people that will ask, how do I get a prophetic word from God? How do I unlock the prophetic in my life? Well, I believe that this gives us a real easy way. Be a just person, and that devout means somebody who is sincere, who is eager, who sought after God. And if you do those two things, the prophetic will begin to be unlocked in your life, whether it's a prophetic word to you or through you. But the Bible states that the Holy Spirit came to this man. And the Bible states that he was waiting to see the salvation. And we see that he then receives this word through the Holy Spirit that he would not die without seeing the Messiah. Now, there are many times in our life a prophetic word will come or we will receive direction, but it doesn't come to fruition right away. Has anybody ever had a word and you're just sitting there and you're like, I know it's coming and you just don't know when it's coming? Anybody? Yeah, I know. All right. And oftentimes we wait, we pray, we seek, and uh, it just doesn't happen at times. Now, if you're like me and you're full of patience, that is easy to do. Just sit and wait. And if you don't catch the sarcasm there, my wife can attest that Patience is not my strongest virtue. It is not something I do well with. I'm not a good patient when I'm sick, and I don't have or operate in patience on the regular. But this man is told, and he says, you know what? He, he receives this word from the Holy Spirit that you are going to see Messiah, the Savior, before you die. Now, I don't know about you, but if the Holy Spirit came to me, and we had been in a barren and a dry place for a really long time because up until this point, we haven't really heard any words aside from the fact that there is a Savior named Jesus coming. This has been in this time between the Old Testament and the New Testament where nothing has been really happening. But this man receives a word that something is going to happen. He's going to see the Savior before he dies. And I don't know about you, but you can, and I've said this many times, Bishop has said it, Pastor has said it, that when you get a word, you can go a long time off one word. And he receives this word. But sometimes we try to accelerate God's plan in our lives. Sometimes we try to fit the word or the direction that we've received to try and fit to manage what our life is when God is simply saying, just wait for my spirit 
to lead you. And when we allow his spirit to lead us, it will lead us always into the promises of God. But Simeon finds himself telling us that he's waited and he now he receives this word and that it's coming. And if you put yourself in this text and if you ever do this where you just read the Bible and place yourself in this situation, I imagine that this day when he woke up and received this word that something was going to happen. Then he says when he gets there, he sees Jesus. He sees Mary and Joseph and he sees this baby and he says that this is going to be the Savior of Israel. This is going to be the savior of the Gentiles. His whole life had been reading the prophecies of the Old Testament saying that there was one coming, that there was a Messiah coming. Undoubtedly had heard the things of Isaiah saying that there was one coming. Undoubtedly he had read and heard these things as he was in the temple, as he was a just and devout man. His whole life was spent waiting for the Messiah. And in a time where there wasn't much happening, but oppression and quietness from the Spirit, here he is and he gets a word. And oftentimes we in our lives can look at ourselves and say, I've received a word, I've heard the word, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but it just doesn't seem as if the door is open quite yet. And in this waiting room, if you will, that God sometimes allows us to be in, there are moments where we feel the Spirit, but we don't feel led into the promise. And there are times where we pray and we seek God and we believe God and we know that God is going to do great things, but we're sitting there in this moment between the Spirit and being the Word and receiving the promise and seeing it come to fruition. And you wonder why sometimes it feels like when God is speaking that it feels like it perhaps is, as Pastor preached about a few weeks ago, that it is important to have just a little bit of faith to see God do great and mighty things. And sometimes it's that little element of faith that's going to hold the word close to us to get into this promise. But what I feel in the Holy Ghost tonight is that as we continue to have our faith, and God is continuing to build some of our faith, he's continuing to work on some of our faith, and he's starting small, he's working through the smallness of your faith, and he's working through and he's continuing to do great and mighty things. And here Simeon is, and he receives this word, and he says, I need to go to the temple. I need to go to a place that I know as a just and as a righteous man. The temple was not foreign to Simeon. This was not a place that he was infrequently visiting. But if you want to get into the presence and the spirit and to the word of God, you've got to go to a place that you know in the word of God. You've got to go to a place that you know in the spirit of God or to the house of God. Because when you get into the spirit, to the house of God, to the word of God, God begins to speak real easily. And it may feel like you're in a dry land, in a barren land. It may feel like you're in a desert. But when you can get into the Spirit of God, all of those things begin to go by the wayside. And in the Spirit of God, in that moment where the Spirit comes, and that word comes, that prophetic word comes, we sit there, we question whether or not, and if it hasn't come to fruition, if we're waiting and we're wondering, and we've heard it preached time and time again, and we might be down to our last little bit of faith. But as Pastor talked about a few weeks ago, that is enough to see God do great and mighty things. You see, there are many times, and I, I, no, nobody in this church, but I had somebody ask me one time, they were like, why do you preach on faith so much? And I, I, I didn't really know what to say. I wanted to say, well, um, because I want to see God do miracles, signs, and wonders all the time. But the answer that came out was, I said, well, the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the reason that I preach faith a lot is because I believe that if it's in the Bible, it can happen for me today. So the reason sometimes that I have just a little bit of faith is because I've seen God do it before and I know he can do it again. So Simeon here is at this moment where he perhaps has not seen anything like this before. The Bible says the Holy Spirit moved on him, and it tells him to go to the place that he knows, to go back to the temple, to go to a place, and there he is going to meet the Savior. But when he gets there, 
Simeon does not meet Jesus doing ministry. He does not meet a Jesus who has raised the dead. He does not meet a Jesus who has healed the sick, caused the lame to walk, opened the blinded eyes. He does not meet a Jesus who's cast devils out. He does not even meet a Jesus who healed a man who was lowered through the ceiling. Instead, he sees baby Jesus. And what I find so interesting in all of this is that it was the smallness of who Jesus was that captivated Simeon to begin to pray and to begin to bless Mary and Joseph with a blessing and begin to bless God for what he had received. Sometimes in our lives, we have this great idea of where God wants to take us and what God wants to do, but sometimes God is just looking for somebody that can sit there and say, you know what, I'm waiting for the word. I believe that the word is there. I know that God has given me a word, but God, I'm okay to settle for just the small things just to keep me going on this path. You see, Simeon knew that there was a Messiah coming, but he didn't get to see the Messiah operating and ministering as he was going to. He didn't get to see the nail prints. He didn't get to see the scars from the cross. But what he got to see was the Lamb of God, the one who would come and take away the sins of the world in his purest form as a little baby. And he said, you know, that this is the one. I'm okay now. I've seen exactly what I need to see to know that God's word is real and God is reaching for someone. You've been wondering, God, I need you this. I need you over here. And he's saying, you know what? Let me show you what I can just do in just this little part of your life. And if you can trust me over here with just a little bit of faith, I'm going to show you great. I'm going to show you mighty things. And next thing you know, Jesus is sitting there just a few years later, and he's telling them, the rabbis, the religious, of what is about to come. But Simeon sees Jesus in his purest form as a baby who had no sin. He sees him as one that has not been abused by the world just yet. But he sees him and he says, you know what? This is the Christ. He got a small glimpse of the Messiah. He got a small glimpse of what was to come. But it was enough. The enemy would try to convince you and try to convince me that if we've not received a big word, if we've not seen God do X, if we've not seen God do this, that it wasn't of God. But the enemy loves nothing more than to lie, to steal, and to kill. It's no wonder why that sometimes when we are sitting there and we're praying and we've received a word and we're waiting for it to come to pass and the spirit begins to move and begins to stir us and we say, I don't know what this is. I've not felt this in a long time or maybe before, but it's the spirit beginning to stir us into promise. It's the spirit beginning to stir us into a new place. It's the spirit beginning to stir faith, saying it may not be huge. It may not be incredible just yet, but if you just keep following and going back to the place that you know, the word of God, the spirit of God, I I can show you mighty things. And it was by the Spirit into promise that Simeon sees this great, this mighty thing. Simeon begins to then hold Jesus. He holds the Savior of the world in his hands. He didn't care that it wasn't the Jesus who was doing miracles yet, but it was just Jesus. And the enemy sometimes can get some of us to believe that just Jesus is not enough. And I have oftentimes looked at my life and I've wondered, and you know, there are times where the humanity side of people can certainly, you, you begin to question whether or not God can or whether God will. But when you look at the word and when you look at what Jesus did and what in the Old Testament, every miracle, every supernatural provision, every time that he made a way when there was no way. If he did it then, he could do it for me now. And I believe that. And I believe that God could do mighty things. But there are times where the enemy begins to infiltrate our thoughts and begins to infiltrate our mind and say that, you know what, just because you've never seen it, God can't do it. But let me just tell you, the Bible talks about how powerful a testimony is. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So you want to know why it's important to share your stories, to share what God is doing. It is a manner of spiritual warfare at times. Because there are times when you may be talking to somebody and building their faith 
that you don't even know what faith or if they've got any faith. They may be sitting there saying, God, I'm out of faith. And they, you, God sends you to them. And you tell them of a battle. You tell them of a victory. You tell them of a miracle. And all of a sudden, you're building their faith and helping them see that they can win battles. And so, I know I'm laying groundwork right now, but I believe that God is getting ready to do something in this place. And as God began to speak through the Old Testament to his prophets, to his people, and began to minister in the New Testament, whenever Jesus would come, there was always an element that he knew exactly where people were at. He didn't matter that there was people that would come to him that were full of leprosy, but he knew exactly what they needed. He knew that there would be people that would come to him that had daughters that were at home dying with Jairus' daughter. And Jesus stops to be healed from the woman with the issue of blood. And in that moment, they come to him and say, don't even worry about it. Don't bring him to our house. It's already too late. But Jesus says, you know what? By the Spirit, we're going to go back to your house, Jairus. And when we get there, you're going to walk into the promise. Your faith may be low. You may not have a whole lot of faith. But when we get where we're going, we're going to step into a promise. And I just feel led of the Holy Ghost tonight that there are some of us that are in this room tonight that we don't even know why we're here. We don't even know. We don't even particularly want to be here tonight because we are so low in our spirit and we're wondering, is God ever going to bring that word to pass? Let me just tell you that when we trust in the spirit, when we trust in who God is, and when we say, God, you've done it before, he'll take us from the spirit into the promise. And I felt in the Holy Ghost as I was preparing for this message that there are some of us that we have been wondering whether or not that we can do this. We've been sitting there saying, God, I've held on to this promise. I've held on to that promise. And I have not seen it come to pass. And every day the devil is saying it's another day that you're praying that prayer that God is not answering. But let me just tell you that when you get into the Spirit, the promises begin to flow. And you say, God, I may not have a ton of faith right now, but God, what I do have, I'm placing in your hand, God. I'm placing every I promise I'm placing everything into the hand of God. And pastor was on to something as he began to preach about little faith, seeing God do great things. And there are some of us that we've got big faith. We believe that we can go and do anything. But it was small for Simeon. He was holding just a baby, just a baby. But he said it was enough to let me know that God's word would never fail. And some of us have got promises. Some of us have got miracles. Some of us have got wonders. Some of us have got signs that we're just holding on to. And it just seems like a little bit. But the Lord is saying, if I can trust you with just a little bit, I'm going to show you great and mighty things. And Simeon sees this, and the Bible continues and goes on. And there's another woman who sees the same exact thing in another time that this happens. But... Our real life application, and this is what I felt the Lord began to speak to me about this. That if we were to go around this room, there would be people in this room that you've been praying for the same prayer for 20, 30 years. Some of you have been praying for your lost children for a long time. And the enemy has convinced us, and we've, been, we've received prophetic words, we've received this, we've received that. And the enemy has convinced us that just because God has not done it yet, that God will not do it. We don't know how old Simeon was, but he had been reading and had been hearing Isaiah and been reading the word from Isaiah about there's going to come a day and his name shall be called Emmanuel. He will be the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. And this day comes to fruition here. And the Bible says that he can now go in peace. He said that I can now go in peace because I've seen the Savior. And the enemy tonight, for some of us, would love nothing more than to get us to come to this place, to come to this house, to come to this church, to come and be around the body of Christ. And to say that I feel that I can reach one more time, but will it be worth it? It may be a small prayer that you've been praying, but the enemy says there's no way that God can. But on this midweek service, I felt led of the Holy Ghost for several weeks that there are some of us, we have just been struggling, we have just been hurting, we've been broken, and we're wondering whether or not that God can. 
there are some of us in this room that we've been praying, and God, as we've been praying and praying and praying that God would send children, that God would bless us with children, and the enemy has lied and told you that God has forgotten about you, but I'm here to tell you tonight in the Holy Ghost that God has not forgotten about you, that God knows every single prayer. He knows every single tear. He knows every single time that you've cried yourself to sleep. But I want to stand here tonight on the authority of the Word of God to say that if God has done it before, He can do it again. And if you've got a word from God, that's as good as going to the bank with a check that you don't know how much it's for. But let me just tell you that if God's done it before and you've got a word, you can take it to the bank because it's going to come to pass. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And I feel that there are some of us, we've, we've come in here, we're discouraged, we're depleted. <laughs> and the enemy life has beat us up. And let me just tell you, man, I felt, I felt it today, my job. There are things going on in my job. I sit there and I just scratch my head. I'm like, what on earth are we doing? And I wonder sometimes if the right people are making decisions. I'm like, Brother White, I'm like, I think I've got a bigger brain than all these people. Of course I do, but... I don't know that I do, but. <laughs> and I look at some of these decisions, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, man. And I'm like, God, I trust you. Woo! When you tell God you trust him, he takes that. But there are times where life can just get to us. Where we can just get discouraged and hopeless. And we feel like we come to church, and we've heard it, victory's coming, breakthrough is coming, blessings are coming, and we're still sitting there saying, Lord, did you forget about me in section two, seat three, row four? Lord, did you forget about me? Did you forget to stop by my house? Did you forget that I've been over here, I've been praying, I've been holding on to a word, I've been holding on. And I've heard your spirit, Lord, I've felt your word. And we're sitting there and we feel like the Lord has forgotten us. But on a midweek service, I just have come to tell somebody that the Lord has not forgotten you. Simeon was not forgotten. He gets a word, he goes to the temple, he sees it. And tonight, I believe that God is getting ready to do things in your life that only he can do. And that when you're standing there months from now, a year from now, you're going to look back and say, it was all Jesus. It might have been small, but it was Jesus. I might have felt like I had just a little bit of faith. But when I put a little bit of faith in Jesus' hands, anything's possible. And so tonight, as we get ready to bring this service to a close, message to a close rather I feel to just help somebody real quick in some spiritual warfare you wonder and you've been seeking God and you have not received your answer you wonder where God is and you wonder what God is doing let me just tell you one of the most powerful prayers that you can pray as it relates to direction and prophetic word in your life is to pray that God would give you just a glimpse I've prayed many times, God, I need direction. God, I need an answer. God, I need this. God, I need that. There's a lot of, sometimes you ever notice, sometimes your prayers include a lot of God I need. We've all been there. Sometimes it's just better to pray, God, I need a glimpse of my life with what you want to do. And I'll never forget, we had a youth weekend service here. And I've prayed, God, I, I want to see what you want to do in my life. And I'll just tell you, Pastor has shared stories about how he met his wife in Youth Congress 2009, Pastor. I was, Friday night, the Lord spoke to me. He said, it's time to find a wife. Woo! Praise God. Let me just tell you, it is, when the Lord says it's time, it's time. You put yourself out there. In that time frame, I put myself out there. I received some nasty feedback. There was a lady who told me that, not a lady, there was a lady my age who told me she was like, you're just not attractive. And I was like, oh, thank God. I'm so glad you gave me that feedback. I was devastated for all of five minutes. And he told me it was time to find a wife. Long story short, 10 days later, my wife and I had our first conversation. 
There was a time, though, when I said, God, I said, I need, I need direction. I need this. And again, it was more a lot of, I, God, I need. But when I began to pray, God, give me a glimpse of what you want for my life. It was another prophetic word that God gave me for my life. He sent a prophet by. And he said that there's going to be things in your life. There's going to be a new season, new time, new things, new that. And sure enough, there was. And perhaps you're stuck in that place as we stand tonight where we are wondering, is God's promise real? Is his prophetic word real? Can I trust the word that was given to me? Can I believe? Because the enemy will do everything to discredit the things of God. He will do everything to discredit God's prophets. In the Old Testament, Every time a prophet arose, there was always opposition. And it was always to discredit what the prophet would say. And there are some of us, we've been hanging on to prophetic words that have not come to pass. And the enemy has tried to build and tried to construct and tried to elevate his word versus God's word in our life. And I know this is a little different than I usually preach, but I just feel led of the Holy Ghost to go here tonight. That when we just trust in His Spirit and in His Word, everything else will be worked out. You see, I have no doubt that Simeon would have loved to have seen Jesus ministering as Jesus did on his time on earth. I have no doubt in my mind that he would have loved to have seen Jesus grown to see what that would look like as the Savior to the Gentiles and the Redeemer to the Jews. I have no doubt in my mind. But just getting a glimpse of what he was getting ready, what was getting ready to unfold was enough for him to know that the Word of God was true. And see, the enemy would try to convince us that if we don't see these great and mighty things with this prophetic word that God has given us and some of us that have had it inside of us, these promises that we're waiting on for a long time, if we don't see it overnight and it's not supernatural, it's not spectacular, that God is, perhaps, God is just trying to give us a small glimpse to what he wants to accomplish in our lives. And I feel that as we get ready to come around this altar, that what God wants to do tonight is just start a little fire that may have burnt brightly one time, that may be dull at this moment, that you don't know if it's the promises of God are going to come true. I'm taking from somebody here tonight seen God heal cancer. He can do it again. I've seen the blind eyes open. He can do it again. I have seen ways where there were no ways. He can do it again. If you're worried about your finances, I've seen God kick down financial doors. He can do it again. If you're worried about what tomorrow may hold, I've seen God move. He can do it again. And so right now, where we're standing, before we come to this altar, I want us just to lift our hands all across this place. And I just want you just to begin to say, God, I trust you. Just begin to prophetically say that. God, I trust you. Because it's hard to lift up an I trust you when you don't see the answer. (laughs) When you don't see how it's going to happen, it's hard to say I trust you. But if you begin to speak prophetically that you trust the Savior of the world, that you trust the Creator of the heavens and of the earth, let me just tell you, He will meet you. And as we make our way around this altar tonight, I want you to just come with lifted hands saying, God, I trust you. You know what you God is you're trusting God with. I don't. 
tell you, he's about to do what only he can do in this place. I feel his presence in this place. I feel his spirit moving in this place. Some of you didn't even want to be here tonight, but you felt led of the Spirit. You felt led of the Lord that you needed to be here tonight. Let me just tell you, God's about to do something and meet you right here. <laughs> when you're led by the Spirit into the promise, whoo, there's nothing like it. So right now, let's just lift our hands all across this place. Whatever it is that you need the Lord to do, whatever promise you've been waiting on, I want you to just say, Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. Let's just lift our voices right now and just begin to thank God for what he's going to do. might have been a while since you've received that word and you're just wondering where God is. Let me just tell you, he's here. He's here in this moment. If you would take, if you've got a need in your body, something that only God can touch, whether it's a need in your body, a need in your life, and you would like to receive prayer, I want you to take a prophetic act and come up to the front right now. Because what God's about to do is take some of us from worry, from doubt, into promise. So if you need, if you want the body of Christ to pray, I would challenge you to come forward right now to take a step of faith because God's getting ready to do what only he can do. Let's just lift our hands all across this place.